It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everybody, it's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne, and welcome everyone to The Wine Ladies, One Sip at a Time. We're live here today on thatchannel.com. And for all our friends and fans on Facebook, on Twitter, and thewineladies.com, thank you for following. And for all of the folks on Facebook that were asking about uh, the worms, yes, <laughs> the worms, and you know what I'm talking about, the photographs. I actually was eating those worms, those fried worms on the plates when I was back in Mexico. <laughs> and it did take a little bit of courage, but let let me tell you, the pictures may have overstated it just a little bit. You know what, Georgia, those worms were one thing, but those larva eggs, I don't know how you did that. <laughs> I know I sure couldn't have done that. You know what they say, when in Rome, do like the Romans. <laughs> All and right. I also want to say, though, I have to tell you, I was in Mexico because I was visiting one of the second the second oldest um, tequila distillery called Herradura, Casa Herradura. And they, the uh, Reposada tequila that I had actually made the fried worms and the egg larvae <laughs> taste not too bad. The tequila over here was absolutely beautiful. It had cinnamon and a little bit of oak, and it was very, very smooth. And I never knew that I could possibly like tequila that much. <laughs> All right, well, that sounds like an award-winning <laughs> combination, to be sure. It was. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of award-winning combinations, I would like to tell everyone that the, the 31st Genie Awards are just around the uh -huh. corner on March the 10th, and George and I were at the press conference last week, and my goodness, there's so many exciting movies to be seen. Yeah. And we decided that we want to do a little bit of a promotion for the, the Genie Awards and the best nominated movies. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing is selecting um, a certain food item to go with some wine and match it up with a film. So the first film we are, are talking about in this week's e-newsletter and on Facebook is Barney's Version, mm -hmm. which is about with um, Paul, Gio, Paul, Paul Giamatti. Gio, Giamatti, that's yeah. right, mm -hmm. from Sideways. Yes. So of course, what is he known for but for Pinot Noir. So we've selected Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir Le Clos Jardin from Canada uh, to go with a rosemary buttery popcorn mm. because of the herbal uh, essences. So enjoy and there's lots more to so visit the Wine Ladies Facebook fan page for that. And we also hear from want to hear from everybody out there if you have any special wine and food pairings that you'd like to enjoy during the the uh, watching your films, make sure you Facebook us with those suggestions as well. Okay, so on with today's show. Today's show is all about one of um, actually my favorite European countries, mm -hmm. uh, Portugal. I've visited there and I've been to the Algarve, loved it. So that is what we are going to be talking about today. Absolutely. Let's have a toast to that, Suzanne. Cheers, Cheers to Portugal. To and Portugal. this is a region that has over 500 indigenous grape varieties. It is absolutely taking the world by storm. So we're going to have a great time. We're going to talk about this wine in just a little bit. Okay, so joining us here today all the way from Portugal, we have the managing partner and co-founder of Brandir. I hope I said that right. Uh, representing multiple award-winning, the multiple award-winning winery, Herdade da comporta? <laughs> How's that? That was fine. <laughs> Fine? fine, or was that? <laughs> she doesn't fabulous? like that word. <laughs> no, it was fine. I mean, like, <laughs> wasn't bad. Yes. All right. <laughs> so this is one of the largest estates in Portugal, and you guys produce incredible, incredible wines with commitment to sustainability. And joining us is Eric Orio. Not uh, bad again. Perfect. <laughs> wow, two out of two. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Now, we also have with us here this afternoon, Daniel Santos from Tinto Wines, uh, specializing in uh, wines from Portugal and Spain. Daniel really has his pulse on uh, how these wines are doing in both Canada and the USA. Daniel, welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure. So, Portugal, I mean, um, these wines have really started to take the world by storm. There's lots and lots of um, experts and sommeliers around the world that are talking about Portuguese wines more and more and more. Tell us, tell us what, what's going on with that. Well, I mean, one of the reasons Portugal is catching interest, I think, is because people are getting bored of the 
French grapes or the inter internationally grown grape. Yes. And uh, we got a lot of different flavors to offer with mm -hmm. our indigenous grapes. So Over 500, we understand. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I, th I think it's more like 200 different um, grapes. But in average, you got two names and a half. Okay, so that's ah, why it's 500. So you, you can okay. make it up to 500 names with original uh, variations. Yeah. Okay, but like Suzanne, Sue, that type of thing. Well, let's say like we take the, the Tempranillo, and in the north we call it Tintaro Riche, and in the south we call it Aragonés. Uh -huh. okay. So that's two, three completely different names for um, right. similar Is grade. the north not talking to the south? What's going on? They do, but... It, just like to pretend they got different stuff or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It want to make it more difficult for you guys. Well, that might make it difficult for the export market, yeah. you know, because once you know one name for a certain grape, yeah. then, you know, you don't realize when you see another Portuguese wine from a different mm. region that that's the same grape, that you've actually had it before and that you may have really enjoyed it. So that's probably one of the challenges, I would think, maybe, that um, Portuguese wines are facing. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it also the labels difficult. are all in Portuguese as well? Not so well, much so anymore. Not so uh, much. Uh, so okay. Lately, we've been we've been turning an eye to an international market, um, not just in the winemaking style, but also yes. in the labeling styles. So you'll see these labels today are kind of representative of a more interna international audience. Uh -huh. um, even the the pictures that they represent are more appealing in terms of the traditional wines that you would have found maybe five six years ago, right? Right. Um, the revolution really is taking place not only in marketing but uh -huh. in the winemaking, right? Yes. Um, and just to maybe carry on a little bit from what Eric was saying with regards to the. Um, the indigenous species or the indigenous grapes, mm -hmm. not only do you see different varieties grown in different regions, uh, but because of the vastness of the country, it's a small country, but yes. in terms of different regions, it's so vast. Um, you know, the contrasting climate in the north for a Tinto Roriz, you know, makes that grape evolve more similar to, let's say, a Tempranillo from Spain than it is when it's grown in the south, which is very, very hot. So right. it's, 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 more, it's more, let's say, uh, of an evolution that takes place as well. Uh -huh. So the characteristic of the grape sometimes is denoted with a different name because it's from that region. Uh, right. That makes sense. Right. Maybe we should talk about Portugal a little bit as a wine growing region. Perhaps um, how large it is, how many different regions there are, and also is there a similar sort of AOC or VQA system for the wines? Yeah, um, yeah we do have uh, uh, quite a few regions, let's say uh, uh, six regions we were relevant to talk about mm -hmm. and um, in each region you do have um, the equivalent of the AOC and the um, Vent Bay right. but it, there's actually some changes happening now so it's good that we have a chance to, to oh, bring okay. this news to, uh, to your audience because um, for instance our region in Comporta mm -hmm. they just changed the designation uh, right now and also it's important to to talk about the difference between AOC and Vent Bay because in Portugal it's not so much a matter of quality it's more a matter of sticking to the tradition or being open to what can be done best looking at all the grapes possible um, so it's not a, a fr quality frontier it's more a tradition versus modernity frontier okay yeah. so in in the regulations in Portugal do they specify uh, certain grape varieties that are permitted to be made in each of those regions as yes. they do in, in uh, France for example yes. and here as well and, and that will be the line between the, uh, actually the, the French AOC at uh -huh. the European level is called DOP, which is called uh, Denomination d'Origine Contrôlée, mm -hmm. or Protégé actually. Okay. In Portugal we call it DOC, or DO, um, and uh, those are the ones that are supposed to be in line with what was done a generation or two in terms of um, oh, okay. blend, which grapes okay. do you blend. Um, so you don't, you're not permitted to have that designation unless you've, you've had, you've been making those wines in that style and following the regulations for two absolutely. generations. Yeah, yeah. I, I said two generations is a matter okay. of speech, but, but yes, the idea is okay. you, are, you have to stick to the, what are considered the, the region's traditional grapes. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, well, we're going to go to our first break. You're watching The Wine Ladies here on thatchannel.com, and be sure you can check out all of our archived television shows on thatchannel.com slash thewineladies or thewineladies.com as well. We'll be right back with more about Portugal and our guests in just a moment.
Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out Wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. In Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. 